Hey guys, Wages World here. It's July 14th. At the beginning of July 14th, about 1.30 in the morning. Um, but I'm going to come at you with a video. And the reason I am is because I think that CME um, that came off the sun that we were talking about could impact us. I think it's hitting us right now. Um, so I'm going to take you guys over and show you the tools here in a minute. And we'll run through a couple other things real quick too. But first, I'll start here with the comment. Um, this is from Jules44. And she says, what happened to Solar Minimum or whatever? Lots of laughs. You know, she got a good chuckle out of that. Says, um, so it seems like we were seeing we're seeing CMEs daily now. And then she says she remembers when, you know, people were getting excited just over a regular sunspot. And the re and she's right on point, okay? And the reason why is because when, when the sun's not very active, you know, the little ones become more relevant to everybody because there's nothing else there, okay? Um, but I also want to address this too. Solar minimum and solar maximum, okay? That's about a, that's a, around about 11-year cycle, okay? We're either moving towards solar minimum or away from it. It's almost like we never get to that, you know, that definitive point and we're able to point to it, okay? It's always fluid, okay? But also we have to understand there's a difference between solar minimum and grand solar minimum. And most people forget that. Especially in our genre. They hear solar minimum and they think and then they start talking about whatever catastrophe could happen around that. And they they don't, you know, clarify that there's there's a difference between a regular cycle and a grand solar minimum. Okay. And even grand solar minimums are expected. Okay. This is all natural, just so people know. It's just we can't say exactly when that's gonna happen. Now, we could probably say we were in a pretty deep solar minimum because we broke the space age um, sunspot, lack of sunspots last year. Okay, so that did point to that. But then we started seeing sunspots from the new cycle. So that means we're on an uptick now. We're not going to get any lower. We're on the uptick. Just like her comment said. <laughs> okay, seeing CMEs about every, you know, that kind of thing. There's more action now. And it's not going to go, it's not going to reverse back the other way. It's going to keep getting more and more active. So her comment's right on point. And I hope I clarified grand solar minimum and solar minimum. Because it's a, it's a good distinction we need to know about. Okay, guys, I'm going to take you here to the Schumann. And um, obviously, guys, looking at that, you can tell that that's as quiet as we've seen it for a long time. As far as having spikes. And if you go back even another day, there really wasn't a spike there either. So, people were asking me, what did the Schumann used to look like? You know, we talk about that a lot. And this is close. This isn't quite there. And the reason why it's not is because if you can picture just about here down, there all the time, that's about what it looked like. All this other stuff up here that stays here now um, wasn't there. At least, to not, not to that intensity. So, you know, this is, we're, at, we're in a pretty quiet uh, vibrational um, pattern right here <clears throat> excuse me sorry um, but you know we had one little spike there but that you know that is what it is but this also points in, because that stuff is there that does tell us that our frequency has risen and is staying there it's not going back okay at least not anytime soon and just like i said before this is our norm right here at 783 but now we have to consider this our norm now too because it's there all the time that, you know, and how what I'm saying is that we these little white sections here didn't used to be there. They used to look just like this part, all blue. Okay, so that, th that never changes up here now. It, if anything, it gets more intense. So that's what I'm trying to say. So I hope you guys understand that too, because this is, this is actually one of the better things to look at to see if we are uh vibrating highly higher highly <laughs> word i learned english anyway um but yeah so you know that's just a good good point to look at here and, and we're quiet right now but you know that can change at the drop of a hat i think we all know that sorry about that guys okay guys i got you over at space weather prediction center um we're going to take a look at this for a second because um, you know, I was going through this, like I said, I was going to go lay down, and I seen this. Okay, um, our geomagnetic activity level is up. 
it's if it goes up another number that would put us in the storm level so this is very active is what they consider like very active conditions and um you know when you take a sharp increase like from doing what's here and then straight up um that's either a flare or a cme or a really short burst of solar wind okay but in this case i think it's a cme because we were expecting one on the 14th um, and I'll take you over to the CME tracker and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, but as far as the sun goes, you know, we're looking at this and got patchy, patchy uh, coronal holes going on here. Not much of that, anything else really to talk about here. There, ain't no, there aren't any sunspots. So, you know, we'll just leave that one alone. Not much to talk about there. Um, but it, when I started seeing all this, okay, when I seen those two, bars pop up here to kp of four which would be almost storm level again if it goes up anymore at all we will be into a g1 level storm which isn't that big of a deal guys okay just so just so everybody understands that all right i mean yes we'll see some auroras from it and all that kind of stuff which we were i've already talked about that with this cme but if you go down here and you look at the ace data you can see how everything reacted and you know I've not seen the, the phi angle do this very often. Usually when we see the phi angle like do its little flip-flop in polarity, it'll, it'll do one of these and then it'll shoot straight up here and then it'll shoot straight back down. I've not seen the phi angle actually do a curve like that. Not very often. I've seen it before, but that's just, you know, that's not, a, that's not something we see every day. I ain't going to say it's, it's not normal because it probably is. But everything else was jumping around too. The yellow is the solar wind. <clears throat> okay. The orange is um, the density. So, but this one was a little different. Okay. This thing was moving pretty slow. So we weren't really expecting a whole lot out of this. But now we're starting to see these things hit the hit the magnetosphere and the and the tools are starting to react. So this is another feather in the hat of the density. And what do I mean by that? Well, there has been a lot of talk, especially here as of late, that the density is more important than the solar wind speed itself when it hits us. And I've, I've said that since the beginning, even since my channel. Um, I always thought that, you know, because something, something that's heavy, going at a small speed, hits you, it doesn't feel good. I would almost rather take a lighter object and <laughs> have somebody winging at me. You know what I mean? And that's kind of where I was at. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, with the with the higher density moving slow, it, it's this right here is proof that it can still mess with our magnetosphere. And it messes with it probably almost, I would, I, in my opinion, I think it actually uh, hits us harder. Not much, but, you know, then we start, you know, you factor in the wind speed. And I'm just doing a comparison between wind speed and density. Okay, if I think one, one thing or the other affects the magnetosphere, I would pick density. That's just me. Uh, but solar wind has its place too, guys. Okay, I'm not saying that it doesn't matter because it most certainly does. So, so yeah, so hold on a minute. Okay, guys, this is the CME tracker, and this has got that CME on it. Okay, now I want to say that the first, first thing here is it's not it's not this one that blew off the side okay it's not that one the one that hits us is over here okay you can see how it clips us it doesn't really even hit us on the chin but it does hit us we're gonna right down through there we'll look at that real quick you see how that goes right across us okay now that we're looking at a top view so we have to look at a side view too because if it's missing on either one of those that means it's going to miss us well this one's hitting us okay and then even to further that out even more the other one here which is my my the one i kind of lean on more than the other two this is earth's orbit stretched out into a straight line okay and where you see the distortion that is where the cmes are at right or solar wind solar storms all that stuff but you can see that the bigger one happens up here wham okay and you've seen the second smaller one down here 
Okay, you can see how Earth is involved with that. So, that's just to show you that, yes, that's the one. And, yes, they actually predicted this right. That, according to this graph, it was saying it was going to be here on the 14th. And so, you know, kudos for that. Okay, guys, this is um, this is what I really was hoping would happen so I could show you guys this. Um, this is what happens to our to our electrical grid, the effects of solar weather on our electrical grid during, you know, some sort of an uptick in solar weather. You can see that, right? You know, anybody that's been watching my channel at all knows that that's active conditions. It's not like extreme, but we do see some yellows and greens pop in there. And all that flashing stuff that's going on, that tells you that we're having activity. Usually it's just that darker blue with a few little splashes of light blue and stuff that kind of goes across. But that definitely is most certainly um, picking up something. So now we got all, basically all the tools are picking it up. So we know it's not a tool flaw, and we know we were supposed to be getting a CME on the 14th, and it's the 14th, or close to it. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it more, but, you know, this is just another thing to show you guys. Now, what this graph is, it shows you the, the effects of solar weather on our electrical grid. That's what this is basically for, and that's just the basic definition. Now, if you want to read more about that, all you got to do is scroll down right here. And then you can read that if you need to, and then research it out. Um, but that's essentially what we're looking at there. Okay. Okay, guys, this is one of the magnetosphere tools. Okay. The one, this one here is the one with the sun off to the left. Okay. So the earth and what we're seeing here, our magnetosphere is off to the right of the sun. What that does is it allows us to get some sort of direction as far as, um, where the sun's at and all that. And tell, it tells you why the magnetosphere is actually pulling back this way. Because the weather's coming from that direction. So, um, there's a velocity right there. That's the, that's the solar wind speed. Now, you're seeing, you know, you're seeing some stuff happen there. You know, you can tell that this is an uptick in, in activity. Um, there is a little bit of strange stuff going on. But I think this could kind of be ex expected with uh, a CME. Um, you can see kind of uh, stuff happen here. And it kind of it kind of gets shot out. And then it goes down through here and gets shot out and all that but that is definitely um, an uptick in intensity and speed but then we look at the density and you're going to see it come in too okay now um yeah so you're going to see this one basically mirror the velocity but this is actually showing you density and you know i, I watched that little piece of uh blue there on the back there it was bouncing around um, what that means is it's just the density around it's kind of moving. And that's right behind us. Um, so, some of this stuff is getting through. I can tell you that. I ain't going to say it's a big deal because it's not because it does happen. Um, stuff gets through every day, matter of fact. Um, people have to understand that too. But here's one that really gets people looking. Okay, this one, this is the pressure one. Okay. And usually what we look for, you know, I show you the one where if stuff's inside the satellite line well we got pressure pretty close guys okay i've seen this thing be completely red all around it before but we're getting compressed pretty good here all right it has made it halfway this is that in my opinion i think this is definitely some of the stuff's getting through um which is probably why we're seeing it on the geoelectric uh field map the one where i just showed you with the the united states with the yellows and blues and the greens that's probably why and um, that's why we're seeing all that so yeah so i mean that's just another thing to show you what happens when we get these things um and again this isn't nothing to be like freaking out about i just wanted to show it to you okay guys this is the aurora forecast also i wanted to show you that because that 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 right there is what we would expect to see um, if it gets any any stronger, you know, it's going to kind of dip down into here. We may see some auroras down in mid latitudes, but it's going to have to get it's going to have to be a little bit stronger than what what we're seeing now to get that. Okay, um, but I wanted to show you guys that. Um, and again, guys, we're not taking this one on the chin. Okay, this is this is like a brush with it. Um, but what it is is it's just barely brushing this magnetically. Okay. 
Um, it's, it's almost like a boat, you know, it's pushing that, it's kind of like a wake, I guess I should say, because um, that's kind of what we see. Um, oh, the main energy is getting pushed out, and, you know, anybody that's been on a boat knows what a wake is, you know, um, and anything can cause a wake, but that's kind of what we're seeing. And, um, you know, so with that being said, we could actually see like little waves of this stuff come in, and it may, you know, last for a few minutes. Um, and when I say a few minutes, Probably like six hours is what I'm saying. Um, you know, typically these events don't really last any more than like 12 hours on the on the high end. And I've seen them last a day before, um, but typically not. Usually those are solar wind streams. Uh, CMEs, you know, they're we know that they're coming. We know that they're moving pretty fast or slow, which this one's moving slow, guys. Okay. I've seen a wind speed of like 250 kilometers per second. But yet our magnetosphere was reacting at the same time. So what that's telling me is that the solar wind speed's slow, but the density's high. So, you know, that's exactly kind of what I was saying earlier. But yeah, so, oh, and comment Neowise, guys. Um, yeah, guys, you can see it in the evening sky now. Um, getting a lot of pictures and stuff in on that kind of a thing. Um, you guys should really check it out. Uh, again... If you go over to spaceweather.com, you're going to see they have like a, I already showed them to you, but where Comet Neowise was going to be during the days ahead. And um, yeah, it's something to see, guys. You're getting some really crazy pictures. So, but I am going to go ahead and end it there, guys. Um, so yeah, God bless. Yeshua saves and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.